So I was putting together a PC build for an upcoming video and I stumbled upon some thermal paste that could potentially be 5 or maybe even 10 years old at this point. So instead of continuing with that video, I figured let's make a video about replacing very old thermal paste and see what kind of difference it makes. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna be replacing some super old thermal paste. I honestly have no idea how old it is, but if you wanna see more videos like this or benchmarking videos or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's replace some super old thermal paste. Our testing platform today is a pretty old CPU at this point. It's an Intel Q9600 from 2008, which is a quad core 2.66 gigahertz processor. I actually picked up this CPU, motherboard, RAM, and CPU cooler combo used off some random guy on Craigslist for 40 bucks over a year ago. I kind of have a feeling that the thermal paste is probably when the guy originally built it, like in 2008 or 2009, but I really have no idea. It just looks super old. Before replacing the thermal paste, I was getting an average temperature reading of 42 degrees Celsius, which honestly doesn't seem that high, especially for a cheapo CPU air cooler that we got on there. I then fired up Cinebench, and after getting an average score of 270 CB, the temperature stayed mostly at around 64 to 65 degrees, and the max temperature that it read was 66. Keep in mind that this test really only stresses the CPU for a couple minutes, which is why I added IDA64 to our testing mix. For this testing, I checked stress CPU and FPU, which will overvolt the CPU a little and get the temperature up there a good bit, and I let it run for 10 minutes. The CPU reached a max temperature here of 70 degrees, once again, not that high. After all our testing, I quickly shut down the PC, remove the CPU cooler, and here you can see how bad the old thermal paste looks. It was applied somewhat evenly, but it's definitely showing its age. It's probably been there for a few years by now. I then started to wipe away all that gunk with my alcohol pads. I tried to get this process done as fast as I possibly could, that way the ambient temperature in the room here stayed the same, and that wasn't an extra factor. The new thermal paste that I'm applying is the Arctic MX4, which is what I always use for gaming PC builds. Link is down in the description but this does introduce another factor into our mix. I have absolutely no idea what thermal paste was used before, so this could potentially mean that the difference in temperatures is purely based off of the different brands of thermal paste, but there's nothing I can do about that, so let's move on. I then reinstalled the CPU cooler, powered the system back up, and immediately started running our tests again. With the new thermal paste, I saw an average idling temperature of 39 degrees, which is actually 3 degrees lower than with the old thermal paste. Next up, I fired Cinebench bench and after a run with a score of 270 CB, same as before, but this time I only got a max temperature of 62 degrees, which is a 4 degree difference. Finally, our last test was Ida 64 and after 10 minutes the CPU reached a max temperature of 67, which is also a 3 degree difference than with the old thermal paste. So as you can see here, it was definitely worth it to swap out this old thermal paste. For about 20 minutes worth of work, I managed to drop the CPU temperatures by 3 to 4 degrees and that can actually make a big difference if you're overclocked. I obviously didn't overclock this system, but if you were overclocking and you could drop your temperatures by 3 or 4 degrees, that could potentially mean a little bit more headroom so that you could overclock your CPU maybe 100 more megahertz, and that's more performance. Well that wraps up my review of some thermal paste replacement. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section if you want to see more tutorial style videos like this. I've been getting a little sick of benchmarking videos, so this was a nice change of pace. Well hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. Also down there is a link to zaxtechturf.com so you can really support the channel and buy baller t-shirts like this. And as always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zax Tech Turf videos.